I'm gonna need a bigger garage. YouTube. Welcome back to the playground. Good to see you back. Um, if not subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below to keep up with what's going on. Anyway, uh, got another wonderful surprise from a very special person. The elf reached back out and said, that truck needs a trailer. I got a trailer. So thank you again very, very much, RC Elf. I appreciate all the help you've given to the channel. And this is going to be a wonderful addition to the already amazing truck. Uh, that I was able to put together from the previous gift. We actually had a chat about, you know, what trailer would fit best, and we both agreed that the flatbed trailer is going to fit best with the grain hauler. You know, with a night hauler or a uh, king hauler or something like that, you can match the trailers a little bit better, but that's going to look kind of silly pulling a reefer truck, you know, nice custom uh, pimped out truck pulling, you know, a giant food reefer truck. And this, I can customize this, you know, we can put an industrial load on it with like big pipes or logs and have everything chained down. Or, you know, I can take those side stays off and make it just a true flatbed trailer and, you know, make some pallets and put some gear on there and, you know, make some straps and everything and strap stuff down. So it looks like a custom load going down the highway. So plans for this. So RCL sent me the trailer. Uh, to put together on the, the channel and to go with the truck. So for what I'm going to do with that is we got more primer to prime every, all the metal on this and we got some paint. And I learned my lesson last time that I got twice as much paint as I thought I would need. So hopefully we won't run out of paint this go around and I won't have to rush around and make emergency uh, trips to the hobby shop. So we're going to prime everything first. We're going to paint everything with the same pearl blue that we painted the truck. So this will be a mixture of kind of raw aluminum and that painted blue. So once I get this out of the box, I'll kind of run through what we're going to do there. But since I was gifted the trailer, I figured I needed to go ahead and, you know, finish it off properly. So first thing we got was bearings to replace potentially any bushings that are in this kit. I'm assuming there's probably 138 bushings in this truck for no reason at all. Um, it should only take probably eight of these, but we've got bearings if we need them. I also picked up the trailer light kit. I was going to do a wireless trailer kit. Um, I just didn't want to try to pack with so much stuff into the underside of that trailer. I didn't know how much real estate that was going to have. And I know this is completely 100% compatible with the MFC. Um, I'm not going to put the plug in the back of the cab as it recommends. Um, I plan on putting this mounted flush down on the uh, back of the bed. Well, there is no bed. The back of, behind, right behind the cab on between the frame rails and that diamond plate. So we're going to mount this up. That way we have lights in the trailer and, you know, turn signals and brakes and reverse. All that's going to come on when it comes on the truck. I also decided to get the motorized leg kit. Um just because I didn't want to have to put it on later. And I, it just seems like it's an awesome addition to, you know, the legs automatically go up and down with the flick of a switch or when you back up into the trailer. Now, obviously, with the wired light kit, um, that is a disadvantage of having this. Um, maybe later I'll put a wireless system in it. I don't know. Um, but we had this and we have this. So these are going on the truck as is right now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some, probably some pipe and probably some logs and probably some, uh, make up some pallets and straps and gear and stuff to put on here. And we'll get all that stuff built and see what it looks like. Uh, see which one I like best and which ones you guys like best. So this whole process is probably going to be another four or five days for me. Obviously much quicker for you. So probably what I'll get done is we'll get, you know, the trailer built and then I'll come back and we'll do all the extras as a second video to that. Uh, just because I want to kind of experiment and figure that stuff out. So it's going to take me a little bit longer. And, you know, I want to be able to give you guys a good example of, you know, this is a pallet. And this is how I built the pallet. It shouldn't be that hard. It's this big. But, you know, 
I may find out an easier way to do it than I have up here, and I'll be able to pass that along to you as well. So without me rambling on any longer, let's get to the build, and then we'll be right back. Well, Houston, we had problems. It's like day five of tinkering with the trailer here. So day one was, you know, getting everything in box, kind of wrapping my head around, you know, what had to be painted, what didn't need to be painted um, at first. So separated everything that needed to be painted. So I have, you know, all the exterior parts of the trailer, the rails, uh, taillight assemblies, all that good stuff to paint that to color match the rig. So day two was sanding all the aluminum parts, uh, just give them a little bit of a rough up, make sure that they were didn't have any like coating that was going to peel off of it if I sprayed it with something else. Uh, so lightly sanded everything with a fairly fine grid sandpaper. I didn't want to leave any sanding marks. Cleaned everything and then hit everything with a self-etching primer. Uh, the reason I did that is that it gives a really good bond directly to the metal. Um, I don't know how well the Tamiya primer, service primer, bonds to metal. I know it bonds pretty good to plastic, but for metal, I wanted to make sure I had a really good bond. So we went with self-etching. I allowed that to cure overnight. Next morning, uh, sanded up anything that needed to be sanded. I had like one little drip that I had to sand. And then hit it with a Tamiya primer and then started hammering on it with the, the blue. And as I noted in the beginning, I did not get enough paint. Um... It's fairly a large surface area, plus there's a lot of waste. Uh, when you're spraying a body, I mean, you can kind of get that. Um, when you're spraying these long, thin pieces, you're just kind of like and getting most of it uh, with a lot of overspray. So I've got a big blue patch on the floor of my sh shop downstairs where all the overspray landed. Anyway, we got the parts painted, let them care for a while, and then while that was being painted, I was up here, you know, putting together what parts I could um, put together at the time. So trying to get those parts together, you know, running downstairs, painting, you know, every 15, 20 minutes or so, um, going through trailer manual, motorized support legs manual, trying to understand where the lights fit in, in these steps, and, you know, just trying not to mess up. So really, I haven't messed up anything, but I did run into a big setback, and I wanted to let you guys know um, about some of the things I, I found out. So in one of Bob's videos uh, from Hobby Concepts a while back, I saw that he had run trailer lights down the side of his trailer. So what Bob did is, when he built his trailer, he didn't put the side supports on the trailer itself. So what he did is he went in and he hit every hole with uh, amber LED to run amber marker lights down the side. And I thought that was a really cool idea, but I kind of wanted to be able to put the stakes on. So I came in and I drilled a hole equally spaced around all the stakes. And I kind of like that because it puts the lights at the front and the rear of the trailer a little bit better. And I still have the ability to put the stakes on. Um, I'm also not going to put the full tall stakes on. I'm going to cut them down a little bit so they're short stakes. So I can run a, like a tied down load using the stakes. And then also be able to put like pallets and stuff on here if I wanted to. So it looks more like a little uh, standard flatbed trailer. So it's kind of dual purposing it. Anyway, back to the lights. Lights are the big thing. So I bought a pack of the pre-wired, pre wired uh, pre resistored lights. So these already have the resistors on the lights. They're pre-wired and you just hook them up to anything 12 volts and under and they light up. Um, obviously closer to 12 volts, you know, brighter lights, lower, going to be a little bit dimmer. So I had intended on plugging these in to those extra holes using the trailer lights. The trailer lights do not have running lights on them. It only has tail lights brake lights, and turn signals. The tail lights are on when you plug it in and the lights are turned on. The problem is when you stick 10 more of those LEDs on that st strand, it does not have enough voltage to push them. Uh, these die completely and these don't even light up. It's a big problem. Um, I can't, I would have to run a secondary power source 
on a switch or something on here to do that. And in Bob's video, he did a wireless system. And I really didn't want to do the wireless system just because I was kind of concerned, you know, having a whole pile of junk underneath these frame rails. I didn't know at the time how much room you have underneath the frame rails. So I kind of was like, well, let me just get the light kit and make my life easy. It's not. It's not at all. <laughs> um, so now I have 10 extra holes in the side of my trailer that I need to plug with LEDs or something. Obviously, I want to put LEDs in there. So this is getting pulled out. And I've ordered all the stuff to do the wireless light kit. So I'll drop the link below. You can watch Bob's video. He fully explains exactly how to do it. Um, I've ordered the parts to do all that stuff with. Um, I had a light kit here. Unfortunately, it doesn't, you know, it's just a very, very simple, simple light kit. You know, push the button, it's on. Push the button again, it blinks and does all kinds of crazy things. It goes through like six different cycles. But it has no turn signals, it has no brakes, it has no reverse. Uh, the kit I'm getting does have the brakes and the reverse and everything. And basically, you pair a second receiver to the FlySky remote. And it's receiving the same signals as a truck is. So it's doing the same thing as a truck is. Plus, it has additional auxiliary channels that I can run the extra lights on and get rid of this. The only problem with that I have, other than delaying, you know, kind of being able to get out and actually see this thing finished, um, I decided to cheat the system. Because in here, it really doesn't tell you how to run the lights. Uh, legs don't tell you anything. And this tells you kind of how to run the lights on the standard tractor trailer trailer. And in the front, you have the hole where you basically put a grommet and plug this through the grommet and the wires just come out of the front of the trailer right about yeah, here. Well, this has the same hole, hole for wires. Well, that sits in here like this. And the only way to pass these through is to actually pull one of the decking boards that aren't on here yet back, run the wire up, and then run it through here um, through the grommet, and then it, it, it wasn't going to look good enough for the way I wanted to do it. So long story short, I drilled a secondary hole in the front, down through, right in the front underneath the mount for the trailer mount, fish the, put the grommet in, fish the wires through, took off the front plastic piece, it's like a nice little slope finish piece, um, that finishes off that, took that, took a Dremel, Dremeled out the hole in the top of the front and the back of that to allow this wire to pass through. Well, now we're taking this off, and now I have a big-ass hole in the front of my trailer. So, I'm going to have to find that piece from somewhere, or make a piece, or, you know, use some styrene to build it up. I don't know, but that's the only real sad part, is I kind of butchered one of the pieces on here to make what I thought was going to work, work, and now it doesn't, and now I have a hole. Um, nobody would probably ever see it. I know it's going to be there and you guys are probably like me and that's going to drive you crazy, especially when you're making something custom and as nice as you can. So we've got to fix that. Um, word to the wise, um, if you guys are planning on installing the trailer light system or installing the motorized leg support at any time, when you're building your truck, buy the motorized leg support system, install all of that. Um, run the wiring for this if you plan on running these plug-in trailer lights. Taking that truck apart, especially since I have such a nice paint job on it and I am deathly afraid of scratching that thing. I, I hate taking the cab off and dealing with that because I just I have this constant fear that the cab's going to fall off the bench or you know at some point I'm going to be doing this and scr scratch the paint with a screwdriver or something. Um, I, it's terrifying. So, you know, if you guys have the plans to do this, try to get all the wiring done in the truck when you first buy the truck. Um, even though you may, you may be looking at doing the trailer and trailer legs way down the road, put it in now if you can. If you can't, obviously, you know, you can make it work. It's not horrible. It's just a whole lot more terrifying, you know, taking the body on and off and doing all that stuff. At this point, I just want to put the body on and leave the body on and never have to take the body off, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to cut this now. Um, i still got work to do to this guy. We've still got to put the decking on. We've still got to put the headboard on. Um, we still got to get the wiring all done. But like I said, it's Tuesday now. 
Um, it's going to be Friday before I get any of that stuff. And uh, we're trying to plan and get this place ready for a wedding at the end of October. So things have become really hectic around here. So I don't know when I'm going to get that out, but it should be within a week or so. Um, hopefully I can get that out and get you guys an update. Um, I did order some decals for this. Um, I do have some other stuff I want to do to it. So hopefully once this is done, I'll have a nice wrap up video and cool montage of the truck and the trailer and everything for you guys. But until then, um, I've got some other things I'm going to note down and hopefully you guys, if you're, if you're looking to buy one of these, if you bought one and you're looking to put it, you're going to be putting it together this winter or something, you know, hopefully some of these tips help you guys out. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button down at the bottom to make sure you don't miss out on kind of the finale of this. And once it's all done, see if I have any more headaches <laughs> along the way. But as always, guys, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Everybody out there, be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.